all the transition metals up until now, and including some of the non-transition metals, I only sat here at the computer and showed you a sample and talked about them. But with bromine, I'm actually going to do an experiment with it. For now, I'll just talk about it, but then I'm going to actually go downstairs, make some, and show it to you. So, bromine is a halogen, and it's in the same group as fluorine and chlorine and iodine below it. And bromine is a deep, dark red liquid. As you go down on the periodic table in the group of the halogens, the electronegativities do slowly get lower, so the volatility and reactivity of them also gets lower, um, but bromine is still not something you want to mess around with. It will, on contact, after a suitable period of time, react with iron wool to produce these clouds of white iron bromide and um, clouds of white iron 2 and iron 3 bromide and clouds of evaporating bromine gas. Now, although bromine is a liquid, its boiling point is actually only 138 degrees Fahrenheit. So, at comfortable, or about 58 degrees Celsius, at comfortable room temperature, it will slowly evaporate, giving off noxious red fumes that irritate the nostrils. In my method for synthesizing bromine, I'm going to use sodium bromide, which is a common chemical that you can get at pool stores so that you don't have to use as much of the normal brominating chemical. In hot tubs, bromine chemical, bromine compounds are the compounds of choice for disinfecting hot tubs because at higher temperatures they work better than chlorine salts and hydrochloric acid. But for pools, hydrochloric acid and chlorine salts, such as table salt, are actually uh, better. And if I can, I always try to show a sample of the element I'm talking about. And I can't show bromine right now because it will evaporate as soon as it's created. And it's really hard to store it. Even in a sealed glass ampule, it won't store for very long. So I'm going to actually go downstairs and make some and then show it to you and pour it on some aluminum and iron wool and um, hopefully we're going to get a nice reaction. So now we're going to synthesize elemental bromine. And the way I'm going to do this is first I'm going to take sodium bromide, which as you can see uh, is sold um, it's called. Le it's sold by a company named called Leisure Time. Um, it's sold so that you can you don't have to use as much of the uh, bromonizing chemical in a hot tub. And I'm going to try to make elemental bromine with this. So let's get all the quantities weighed out and we'll get started. Um, the total theoretical yield that I'm aiming for is 16 grams of bromine and I'm not sure exactly what percentage of theoretical yield I'll get in this experiment probably around 50 or 60 percent um, but I want 16 grams of bromine at the end theoretically and so the mass of hydrochloric acid that I'll need is 17.64 grams and that's what I weighed out here and then I'll weigh out uh, bleach and sodium bromide and then I'll talk about why we need these chemicals I've weighed out 20.6 grams of NaBr, sodium bromide, which is the chemical I'm going to isolate bromine from. Um, I've weighed out 17.64 grams of 31.45% H of HCl solution, which works out to be um, the correct amount of HCl that I need. And then I weighed out, uh, I didn't actually weigh this out, but I, weighed it, I got a bunch of bleach, and I'm just going to keep adding it until... I see that no more bromine is forming. So now let's talk about what's going on. Well, what I'm first going to do is I'm going to take the sodium bromide, put it in this Florence boiling flask, and dissolve it in water. OK, so we have all of the uh, NaBr dissolved now. And now the next step, um, I don't know if you remember in my chlorine video, 
what I did is I took hydrochloric acid and added bleach to it, and that made chlorine gas. So what would be great is to make hydrobromic acid, add bleach to that, and make bromine, which is exactly what I'm going to do. So I've got hydrochloric acid and sodium bromide, and I'm going to pour the hydrochloric acid into the sodium bromide solution. Now, because chlorine has a higher electronegativity than bromine, it will um, displace the bromine in the sodium bromide. You're going to get sodium chloride and bromine ions, which is, and the bromine is then going to bond to the hydrogen. from the hydrochloric acid, and you're going to get a hydrobromic acid and sodium chloride instead of hydro, uh, sodium bromide and hydrochloric acid. So nothing much visually is going to go on in this reaction. Um, I'm actually going to zoom up the camera. Okay, so we have sodium bromide, and now I'm going to add the hydrochloric acid. I did the stoichiometry of this and you need surprisingly little. Now what you will see, if you look carefully, it's really hard to see on camera, but trust me, there is a solid precipitate of salt, of sodium chloride, um, that you can see because I just barely dissolved the sodium bromide. And I actually didn't check, but, I'm, but my guess is that the solubility of sodium chloride is lower than that of, the, of sodium bromide, so it precipitates out. That's my guess. So now I'm going to do the really visually appealing and very, very, very cool step of the reaction, which is adding the bleach. Um, and the bleach is going to, of course, turn the, it's going to kick out the bromine, give it its extra electron that it wants, um, and you're going to form Br2, and that is going to um, be really, really, really red because bromine, elemental bromine is really red, so the solution is going to suddenly turn really red uh, when I add the bleach. So here it goes. Here it goes. And I'm going to continue adding bleach until no more color change is observed. Okay, and now the color change stopped and um, for every, um, when I add bleach, it just gets more dilute. So I'm going to stop adding bleach. And what we have now is a solution of water, uh, bromine, um, sodium chloride. And remember, what I wanted is bromine. I don't want this craziness. So what I have to do now is to separate out all of the component parts here. Okay. I had a little mishap and I had to remake the solution, but this is exactly the same solution as I had before, bromine solution. And you can see some of the bromine vapors are coming up. There's the bulb, and here is my distillation apparatus. So here's what's going to happen. To separate the bromine water, uh, the bromine from, the, from all the other stuff, the way I'm going to isolate it is because, is, um, comes from this fact. Bromine boils well below water's boiling temperature or any of the other temp uh, boiling temperatures of the things in, in there. So I'm going to heat the hot plate up to about 90 degrees C and bromine is going to start to boil. It's going to go up and then here I have this bulb and any water that comes up there will hopefully um, condense and drip back down into the flask. The bromine will continue on as a vapor until it hits here and here what I have is I have a coil of glass and around the coil I have a jacket which has water which I'm pumping it's got cold water pumping through which I'm pumping through from a garden hose here's the tube coming in cold water comes in hot water comes out and I'm just watering the grass over there with the other tube so cold water is flowing and the bromine vapor comes in here goes around and around in coils and eventually it become a liquid and drip out of here into my collection vessel. So that's theoretically how it should work. Um, let's give it a try. Okay, I've been gotten to a pretty big milestone. Here I have the flask, and it's here it is. And as you can see, there's actually real liquid bromine in the first two coils of the 
condenser, and then I put ice packs um, on the receiving vessel. It's actually a smaller receiving vessel. Um, I changed it up, but um, you'll see you'll see the apparatus once the bromine gets closer. Okay, I'm decided to stop the distillation now. As you can see, the color in the Florence flask is much lighter. Um, and then for some reason, uh, some of the salt started uh, getting distilled up and it's recrystallizing in the middle, uh, going up to the bulb. So I decided to stop the distillation. And then you can see here I have plenty of bromine. It hasn't gotten all the way to the end of the distiller, but I'll be pouring it out. So uh, you'll be able to see that in a little bit. And we can check how much of my theoretical yield I got. Okay, so before I cut to me um, pouring bromine over uh, aluminum and iron, I want to let you know um, what my theoretical yield was. I got, I ended up getting um, 4.36 grams of bromine, and that's about 27% of my theoretical yield. So it's not as good as I hoped for. But that was a pretty, pretty far-fetched hope, actually, for the first time I'd ever made bromine. So, um, you know, 27% of theoretical yield is pretty good. Um, and I got some bromine, and also all the chemicals involved in it are pretty cheap. So, low yield isn't actually such a big problem. Put a bromine on it. That's all for now. If this doesn't work, I will... Um there we go so what is happening is the iron is reacting with the bromine to make iron bromide which is a salt. Just like the chlorine reacted with the iron to make iron chlorine, chloride, the bromine is reacting with the chlorine, with the, excuse me, the bromine is reacting with the iron to make iron bromide. I was wishing for a slightly more vigorous reaction, but... There we go. There's a better reaction. Come on, be going. Oh well. You can see it's a pretty cool chemical. And maybe in the future I'll try to make some more of it.